This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. And welcome to the After Action Review. I'm Rod Rodriguez. So that is our new opening song from the Bishop Gun Band, Making It. It's off their Notches album. Huge thanks to the Bishop Gun Band who gave us permission to use their song in this podcast. I love the message of making it. It's, it's what we're all trying to do, isn't it? Make it. Making the discomfort and uncertainty of business feel normal. We're making it, folks. We're making it. And that whole thing happened over Twitter. The power of social media. You know, again, thank you to the Bishop Gun Band for supporting this this veteran podcast. So go out and check out that album. And uh, you can go check them out on Twitter at Bishop Gun. That's gun with two N's, Bishop Gun Music. Let them know you heard the song here on the After Action Review. So like I said, that whole conversation to use the music came about over Twitter. Social media is huge, to say the very least. And it's a tool millions of people use to propel their business through advertisements, awareness, and even direct sales. We're in the middle of a Gary V. Fuel talk to the camera about what's important to you kind of world, and it's pretty fantastic. Along with Twitter and Facebook, Instagram has been a source of conversation starters, business, and a place to market yourself as a personality, spokesperson, and a brand ambassador. My guest today is Caitlin Miller, a fitness model, power lifter, and Instagram influencer. She's also a Navy veteran. I became aware of her through her online petition to the veteran community for votes that she needed to win a fitness magazine contest. And the community was responding fantastically. Of course, at the time of the recording, she was still in the race and I was really hoping she would make it. Since we talked, she didn't make it into the next round, which sucks, but she took the loss like a real champ and focused on her message. The message that she has been adamant about sharing her message of hope after surviving sexual assault. She's been using fitness, Instagram, and social media to talk about her experience dealing with her ordeal and to encourage other women to speak out. Her fitness platform, her striving to become a a bigger influencer, has had everything to do with promoting the message to women that they weren't alone. Now, I was really happy with our interview when we hung up. I had a lot of hope for her entering the next round of voting. A few days later, after the vote, I ran across a Facebook post from her where she explained that she would be closing up her personal Facebook page and working primarily through her model and influencer pages due to sexual harassment online. It had gotten so bad that she had to shore up her social media accounts just to get some peace. This crushed me, man. This crushed me. She survived sexual assault, has gone through so much, and still people harass her because they can't demonstrate any level of decency. Look, Caitlin is a beautiful woman who posts videos and photos that are both inspiring and provocative, but nothing, nothing she or any woman posts on their personal or work page warrants sexual harassment. You, me, the consumer and followers of hers and every other fitness model, actress, influencer, the responsibility is on us to be respectful online no matter what's flying through your head. You can like, share, and comment without being creepy, without being disrespectful, without being gross. It's tough to put yourself out there in social media, to lay your ideas, your thoughts, and your body to the scrutiny of the public. That's a leap I don't think many of us are able or willing to take. So as you listen to this episode, remember that this is the voice of the woman in those photos. You might be following her on Instagram. Every one of those models is a human being with real feelings, joy, pain, fear, hope. Golden rule, people. Golden rule. Treat others as you'd want to be treated. And if that doesn't work for you, then treat others as you want your daughter, your wife, or your mother to be treated. The bottom line here is don't be gross. Don't harass. 
Don't be part of the problem. Don't cause more pain in this world. Don't be that guy or gal. Before we jump into the interview, I want to tell you about what's helping me get through the startup school that I've been doing with Capital Post, Alpha Brain from Onnit. Clinically proven to help with memory and focus, all natural, no chemicals. And now you can get 10% off your purchase of Alpha Brain and more from the Onnit store. Just go to onnit.com, use coupon code AAR at checkout. I use Alpha Brain every day, folks. Seriously, it's absolutely made a difference. onnit.com, use coupon code AAR, save yourself 10% at checkout. Your business is worth it. All right, folks, let's jump into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Miller. My name is Caitlin Miller. I am a U.S. Navy veteran of six years, and currently I am a massage therapist and online fitness and nutrition coach. So... Tell me about this competition. You, uh, you know, I, I first became aware of you uh, on Instagram and then on Facebook. Uh, we have a mutual friend. We, he, he recommended uh, that I talk to you essentially because uh, he saw what you were doing in the influencer world as a veteran. Can you tell me a little bit about all that? Yes. So I am currently involved in a contest to be the cover model of Muscle and Fitness Hers. I have actually made it to the semifinals round, which is blowing my mind. <laughs> so I've made it through five rounds of elimination. It's all based on public voting. And currently I am one of the top 84 women going for this. Tonight, um, we actually do the um, final elimination to go to the finals, which will be the top 12. And then from there, they'll select the one winner of the contest, which she wins $20,000, the cover page of Muscle and Fitness Hers, and a two-page spread in the magazine. Wow. So shout out to Grant Rogers for um, recommending that we, we connect because I think this is amazing. I think what you're doing is, is pretty fantastic representing uh, the Navy uh, out there doing some amazing things. How did you get involved in fitness? So I actually started because I, in 2012, I went through, uh, I went through a really tough period in my life. I actually went through, I had been sexually assaulted on my deployment in 2011 and 2012, I got a new member in my chain of command that really helped me turn my career around by showing me what it was to serve for a man that would never invade my boundaries or try to hurt me in any way. And because of that, my self-confidence grew more and more as time went on. And I, I remember seeing this girl in the gym one day up there in Washington, and it turns out she was an NPC bikini competitor. And I thought she looked amazing, so I ended up walking up to her and asking her what it was that she did, and she told me. And at that point, because I had been, you know, depressed and dealing with PTSD for so long, I had gained about 30 pounds. So I actually, that day, hired a coach and started prepping for my first NPC bikini show. That, that is amazing. So you took something that had a a definite uh, life-changing event and then turned it on its head. Yes, definitely. That is, that's fantastic. So what is it about the world of fitness that keeps you in there? A lot of people will go in, they'll accomplish goal, and then they get out. It's kind of like, you know, you, you've been there, now you want to do something else. Um, you seem to be very steady. You seem to be very dedicated to the world of fitness. What is it about the world of fitness that keeps you there? You know, um, for one, it's the lifestyle. I actually really enjoy being fit and being able to do really anything that I can set my mind to. You know, I'm not an endurance person whatsoever, but every year I do a 31-mile ruck in honor of the 31 um, special forces that died in Afghanistan in that really big helicopter accident in 2011. And... Just being able to do whatever it is that I set my mind to. And also, like, it's really fun as a woman being incredibly strong. And I'm also very competitive. So I'm sure that helps, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. So, uh, yes, go ahead. 
No, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, this is one of the things I hate about doing interviews over the phone <laughs> and not being able to see somebody. So like, <laughs> so for everyone listening in, I usually we usually do Skype interviews or especially if we have this this geographic uh, disconnect. But um, due to technical difficulties and that would be our cable and Wi-Fi and God knows what other uh, gremlins are in the Internet tubes. Uh, we're doing this <laughs> just verbally over like phone. So it, it, there is a tendency to step over each other. One of the things I absolutely hate, but let's go back to your competition, your fitness. You're definitely competitive. I've seen your videos where you're just lifting uh, an absurd amount of weight. You're doing some amazing deadlifts. Do you follow a particular type of training? Is there, is there a particular, like some people are CrossFit, some people are power lifters. What do you consider yourself? So I'm actually a power lifter now. I made the switch back in this, this past December, so eight months ago now. Um, the reason I did that was because after five years of competing in bodybuilding, I just decided it wasn't the right fit for me anymore because it really being that lean for a really long time um, messed with my hormones pretty bad. So I switched into power lifting so that I could keep myself at a higher body fat percentage mm -hmm. and be healthier and also lift some really absurd amounts of weight, like you said. <laughs> so tell me, what is for, for a lot of people who may be listening who aren't familiar with the world of fitness or particularly the world of bodybuilding and powerlifting, what is the difference between powerlifting and bodybuilding? Because to a lot of us, it may sound like it's the same thing. So the typical bodybuilding competitor you'll see is we have that absurd tan. We're walking on stage. We're wearing these like bright, sparkly bikinis, and it's a judging competition. Powerlifting is too, but it bodybuilding is judged based off of your physique. So there's no lifting that's actually done in the competition. And also the training style is completely different in that it's more hypertrophy based or designed to make your muscles grow. And powerlifting is really all about just raw brute strength in the squat, bench, and deadlift. And it also is a judging competition, but it's a lifting competition. We don't wear any, any of those high heels or the, <laughs> the bikini or the tan in competition. So it's all about the performance. Yes. I see you on Instagram and you have uh, a really... Uh, very, you have a lot of followers. You have a pretty great following on Instagram. Um, there's a lot of pictures of you doing your lifts and, and your uh, different competitions. Seeing those numbers, seeing what you're doing on Instagram, do you consider yourself an influencer? I believe I am. I have people that reach out to me daily that say how much me sharing my story and just being honest about what I'm dealing with in the fitness world and what I'm trying to do in that world. A lot of people reach out to me and tell me how much I've inspired them. So I definitely consider myself at this point, like to be, to be an influencer because people look up to me in that aspect. We see your numbers. And I know as somebody who's involved in social media, um, those are the kind of numbers that a lot of people wish they could aspire to. Um, what is, what, what are some of the ways that you've been successful in promoting yourself on Instagram and becoming the influencer that you are and, and, and you will be, you know, I actually, I interact with every single person that comes in on my post. So I always make time and I do it on Facebook too. And I always make time to answer every single comment that comes through and I will always try to go in and interact with each person in my following on a couple of their posts and make, you know, a nice comment, not just something generic or anything like that. And I think people really appreciate that when they show interest in your brand and you reciprocate it. That's worked for me so far. What are some stumbling blocks that you've encountered in the world of uh, being an online personality? You know, part of my problem is that I have multiple aspects to what it is that makes me me. You know, I'm a power lifter. I'm a massage therapist. I'm an online fitness and nutrition coach. I want to start this gym for people with PTSD. So for me, it's really been an issue of 
kind of forcing myself to narrow this down and figure out exactly what my focus is. And what do you think your your what what is that? What is the narrow? What is the focus for you? So for me, I know that I want to focus on people with PTSD, especially people with PTSD for reasons other than combat, because I I haven't personally been in combat, so I don't really understand PTSD from that side, but I understand PTSD related to sexual assault. And especially women, I know that women that have been through sexual assault with the Me Too movement and everything, it's definitely getting better, but women need a strong female out there that will take a stand and be willing to speak out against this. Now, when you're a social media personality, when you're putting yourself out there on Facebook and Instagram, you get a lot of support, you get a lot of people who understand where you're coming from and what you're doing. But you've, you've also got a lot of people who are trolls. You've got a lot of people who are detractors who are going to say uh, some pretty bad things about you, especially the further you go into the limelight. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced the, the any negativity or any negative feedback against what you're doing? You know, I have actually experienced a lot of sexual harassment in the past couple of months. But I am far enough along in my recovery to where I have been able to manage it gracefully and I just block them, you know, unfortunately with the type of modeling that I do and things like that, it sort of comes with the territory of coming into the limelight. And that's another thing that I want to speak out about is that it shouldn't have to be like that for somebody that's trying to be, do good in the world, you know? So I just, manage it as effectively as I can. You, you're, you, you're out there, you're putting yourself in these, um, these competitions. You do have people that are, of course, like you said, the detractors, you're dealing with it as, as best as you can. What is your advice for other females, other women who want to aspire to be an online personality who want to be fitness models? We see them all the time. There, I, I, I think there's, um, a new industry, and maybe it's not so new for some people, but for me, it's kind of new to see so many people jumping into fitness, and not just fitness for the sake of being fit, but fitness for the sake of uh, entering competitions and promoting themselves. They're using, you know, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. They're pro it's self promotion, which is great, hundred percent. But you know, it, that whole thing seems to be tiresome. <laughs> like it's a lot of work to keep all that up. What's your advice to somebody who wants to do this? You know, I would really recommend that they sit and really think it over before making a rash decision because there's no going back. Um, I was just featured on CBS news, San Diego yesterday, actually. And I, I, there's no going back after this. And I'm happy. I mean, this is, this is what I'm meant to do. And I truly know that, but now I know that I've really put myself out there and my story has sort of exploded. Um, so I also recommend, I'm actually an avid proponent of psychotherapy. That's actually what's helping me keep my head straight through all of this because my psychologist pretty regularly talks to me about making sure that I keep space for myself to and to turn off the social media at the end of the night because you know I work pretty close to full time I'm working on business development stuff too and then I'm on social media all the freaking time and I try to you know I make time for the gym every single night so at the end of my day I mean I'm putting in like 16 hour days so you really have to evaluate if it's something that you have time for and if it's something that you can handle mentally because it is not easy dealing with sexual harassment. So just know that that's part of what is going to happen once, unfortunately, once you step into the limelight and you have to really like evaluate if that's something that you're ready to tolerate. You said there's no going back. Yes. So I realized that now my story is truly out there and did, I spoke about uh, sexual that, harassment. Ooh, is that me. scary? Is that is that 
does does that make you a little uncomfortable knowing that the that your story, a very personal experience, is out there? It is. You know, um, I spoke about my sexual assault for the first time on Facebook two weeks ago, and I knew it was the right time. It's been seven years since it happened, and it was like the chains had been released when I spoke about it for the first time. But saying that on the news and talking about that was much different. And it was, it was very hard for me to maintain my composure, especially knowing, you know, now that I've had well over 200 shares of the video on Facebook and it's pretty, it's, all over the place now, you know, and you know, it's, it's scary because my attacker is still out there. Mm -hmm. Was he ever, was, was he ever brought to, was he ever brought charges up on or did he ever get convicted? No, he didn't. How does, I mean, okay. So I I, want to ask you, how does that feel? But I feel like that's a bit insensitive. But at the same time, I I, I I feel inclined to ask. I mean, knowing that this person is still out there and you have become such a public figure, there's definitely – you just said, you know, there's there's some fear, trepidation perhaps. But in general, what's your thoughts? What's your feelings on that whole situation? You know, it's really um, – I did a restricted report. I actually didn't um, put his name out there because it was somebody that um, – was very in very close proximity to me on deployment. And I was very wary of what would happen if I spoke out and nothing actually did happen to him and I still had to work for him. So it's, you know, it's the reason that he hasn't got in trouble is really because of me. And that's something that I have to live with, um, you know, and, it's, it's a struggle because I know the fear that people have that have been through something like this. And I can't even, I can't tell somebody that you need to make it public because I know exactly how that feels. Like just going through a, re- a restricted report is traumatizing enough. When you make it unrestricted, when you're in the military, it becomes much more invasive of a process and you're still, you know, reeling from the incident and trying to process that on top of everything. Do you feel like this, I mean, and you definitely, you already, you already talked about the feeling of weight being lifted off of you, but it sounds like, there's also a new kind of weight that's been put on you. There is a little bit just because of, um, you know, putting myself out there because I really am not, I'm not doing this for fame. Fame scares the hell out of me, especially given, you know, what I've been through, but I'm doing this because I know I'm strong enough and I'm, I'm doing it because I believe that there are people out there that really need somebody that has a strong enough voice to speak up about this. And also people need to see somebody different in the fitness industry. Like these magazines, like the one that I'm trying to get on the cover of, like you see kind of like, like the typical bikini competitor with no tattoos or anything like that. And I'm much more muscular. I've got a different look. I've got tattoos and piercings and all this sort of stuff. So I think it would be refreshing for people to see somebody that's a little bit different of a personality out there. Well, I think you are definitely a different personality. And I don't think it has anything to do with your tattoos. I think it has everything to do with your attitude, with the cause that is behind what you're doing. Um, it's fan- it's it's refreshing to see somebody in the social media realm who is self-promoting, not for the not for the sake of self-promoting, not just because they want to be in the limelight and they want to be famous, but because they want to bring attention to something that's bigger than them. Yes, absolutely. That, that's awesome. Um, do you have any sh- Do you have any uh, parting shots for our listeners? Anybody that might be listening? Just keep the faith, you guys. If You know, I always tell my clients that if you are starting on a fitness and nutrition routine, if you're brand new in it, there was a point five years ago that I couldn't even lift a barbell, you guys. So just if this is something that you are trying to take up and you really want to take you change your lifestyle, just keep up with it. You know, I had to schedule it every single day in my calendar for 
a year plus to make sure that I got in the gym and maintained my discipline. And now it just comes as second nature because I love it so much and it, I'm, tr I'm truly passionate about it. But, you know, it takes that kind of commitment to make a change like this. So just keep up with it. I, I promise you that your, your health is worth it. From somebody that's had hormonal issues in the past, that's not a problem you want to have. So take care of yourself and do what you love. You know, if it's, if it's something that if you don't like weightlifting, you don't have to do that. Go run or bike or swim or, you know, figure out what it is that fits you. Absolutely. And if we want to learn more about Caitlin Miller, where do we go? So you can find me on Facebook. You spell my name K-A-T-E-L-Y-N Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. Or you can find me on Instagram and Body by Caitlin. Fantastic. All right. That does it. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Appreciate you big time. Thank you. And all those links are, of course, going to be uh, on the website, on the page. Thank you so much for taking time to do this interview. You too. And thank you for the opportunity. All right. Later. <laughs> Bye. All right. That was the amazing Caitlin Miller. Don't forget to follow her on Twitter and Instagram at Body by Caitlin Miller, as well as on Facebook. Those links will be available in the show notes. Huge thanks to Caitlin Miller for being on the show. And again, to the Bishop Gun Band. Check out their album, Nacha, is available on iTunes, Play Store, Amazon, wherever you get your music from. Go check out the Bishop Gun Band. That's gun with two ends. And of course, the Java Can. It was designed by Green Beret for you to have a cup of coffee, to brew a cup of coffee. Anywhere life takes you. We're talking from like a hiking trail to the top of a, a mountain in Afghanistan. You can still brew a fresh cup of coffee. Go to thejavacan.com. Use promo code AAR. You're going to get 10% off your purchase of the Java Can. Don't forget to like, listen, subscribe, and share the After Action Review. This very podcast that you're listening to. Leave us a review of your own on iTunes. Your review helps us tell the story about this podcast. Helps us reach new people. All right. So, like, listen, subscribe, and share the After Action Review. That does it for me. I will see you in the next episode.